Has Ryzen failed? Do the SR7 CPUs suck? And why aren't the gaming benchmarks not as good as we have hoped? Depending on what angle you're viewing this situation from, some of the answers to these questions may seem like a yes. But have we truly tapped into the potential of these CPUs? Hey what's up guys, my name is JD from JD Tech Gear and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing, checking out the rest of the channel, and become a part of the Tech Junkie family. And I know I've been uploading a lot of Ryzen videos lately, quite a remarkable event within the last decade or so in the CPU market. So it's pretty huge and it makes for a great discussion so but I have more videos coming up that are aside from Ryzen so stay tuned for that so I'm assuming you guys have looked at a bunch of SR7 benchmarks if you haven't already go check those out before coming back to this video or you can just stay tuned for that that's perfectly fine I'm not going to quote any specific since there's an abundance of them I'm just going to use them and throw them up on the screen to validate my position when I need to so most of the consumers in the custom PC market are interested in gaming a lot of Ryzen benchmarks for gaming have just been meh. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, but it's not what we were expecting. We wanted to see this thing blow Intel out of the water. Perhaps there's more to the surface and we need to tap a little bit deeper into this. Now, personally, I don't have any of the chips yet. I had to buy one for myself, which will be here sometime next week. So that will be for videos later on. But where I'm speaking from are from benchmarks from various reviewers. So the last series of CPUs from AMD were okay for the price at the time, but fell behind Intel very fast. A lot of people feel like AMD will always fail and that the hype train will completely derail and be their ultimate demise. I promise you that is not the case this time, and here's why. Well, the first step is IPC, also known as instructions per clock, is very important. In a nutshell, IPC gauges how well the CPU computes, basically determining how efficient each core is going to be. That kind of performance is shown through single core benchmarks. If you have as many cores as you want but the IPC sucks, then it will be a waste of cores and will fail to work well and efficiently. Now let's talk about the Ryzen SR7 chips and their IPC performance. IPC in single core performance has vastly improved compared to the previous generations. In most cases, the 1800X, 1700X, and 1700 stood its ground with respectable single core performance compared to Intel. It may not always beat the Intel equivalent chips every time, but they certainly do compete. Now let's talk about other reasons why Ryzen has not failed. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of skewed perception, but these chips were not designed to beat Intel. They were meant to compete against Intel, compete in a budget market, a market that Intel is very unfamiliar with. This is where the Ryzen CPUs truly shine. As far as CPU benchmarks go, not the gaming benchmarks, they are quite impressive for their single core and multi-threaded performance, which compete very nicely for the price. They encode fast and have very respectable render times. This is where an A-core 16-thread CPU is very powerful. Also, their power efficiency is quite remarkable for these 8-core 16-thread CPUs. Actually, the most power efficient on the market currently. Now, where they are not performing as well as everyone might have hoped is gaming. Now, to be clear, you shouldn't buy an 8-core 16-thread CPU for gaming. They're not really designed for that, but that'll be more for later down in the video. Most games are not even going to come close to utilizing all 8-cores and 16-threads. So the CPU won't even be fully utilized to its maximum potential. So this is where the lack in gaming performance comes from because the speed is not at the same level as Intel. Even at four gigahertz for an SR7 1800X won't perform as well as the 7700K. This is simply because the game is probably only using at a maximum of four cores. But the difference is the four cores being used by the 7700K are fairly faster than the Ryzen chip. Even if all the cores are being used, the faster clock speed and similar efficiency to the 1800X, the 7700K will still outperform. Additionally, AAA titles mostly use DirectX 12, which is optimized for NVIDIA and Intel. AMD can utilize Vulkan much better than DirectX 12, so there is still a gap in game optimization that needs to take place. 
Gaming performance relies both on hardware and the developer. Keep in mind this is a brand new chip from AMD. Intel has had everything optimized for them over the years since they have been dominating the market. A brand new DDR4 chipset from AMD is going to take time to cultivate and show the true raw power of these CPUs. That's why I recommended waiting in my other video SR7 or wait for the SR5 or SR3. Both Intel and AMD have very well crafted CPUs on the market now, but they are targeted for different consumers. So no, AMD has not failed. They have actually done the opposite. They have offered an incredibly well valued 8 core 16 thread CPU that benchmarks very competitively with rendering, encoding, and computation. The SR7 CPUs will be able to game quite nicely as well, but not as good as Intel for a while for the reasons I have stated. It will take time for games to optimize towards the AMD processors, but because Intel has owned the market for so long, game developers optimize towards that since that's what the majority uses. Give it time and patience. Their improvements have been rather remarkable and they are only the SR7 chips. The SR5 will also be a very important player in AMD's success, as AMD might focus on a higher clock speed for the SR5s. Nothing is confirmed though, that is just speculation. Also, 8 core CPUs are not necessarily designed to have the best performance in gaming. They are designed for more heavy workloads and multitasking, so that's where more threads will be utilized. Furthermore, I am not pro AMD or pro Intel. I'm pro consumer. Competition is good, otherwise the consumer ends up paying the price. Also on the side note, I will be doing a Ryzen SR7 1700 build. That's a CPU that I think will have a lot of flexibility because of its price for performance that it offers, and it's also less than 7700K, as it will probably not perform as well as the 7700K. It will do a lot more for me in other aspects with programs and rendering and all sorts of other things that I do on the computer. So I'll be doing an in-depth review of that and taking that from multiple aspects. So that will be coming within the weeks. Anyways, I hope this video cleared up any confusion, any skewed perspectives, or anything that you just didn't really fully understand the full aspect of everything right now. There's a lot it has to catch up to more than just the hardware side of things. But anyways, like I said, I hope this video helps you guys out. If you want to see more videos like this where we discuss about PCs, do PC builds, that will be in the future. I still have to save money for that. And we also do tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. Then consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.